Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at the 2017 MacBook Pro and see which specific MacBook or just see if it's even worth it in the first place. Now what I will definitely tell you is I've owned MacBooks like this and I've owned this one for quite a bit of time and personally I think these MacBooks were such a huge hit and a, such a huge miss in my opinion. If Apple just did what they did now with their MacBook lineups then or even kind of what they did with their 2015 MacBook, I think they would have had a huge hit on their hands and and a lot of people would look back at these MacBooks as some of the best deals to pick up. When I personally owned my 2015 MacBook Pro, even up until like early last year, I was using that MacBook for a lot of different things. I was using my 2015 iMac, but I was just confused as to which MacBook to pick up because I've heard so many, you know, bad things about the 2016, 2017, 2018, even 2019 MacBooks. And then we had those M1 MacBooks that completely switched our opinion on these things. Although we were still lacking, you know, extra ports that we got on the 14 inch and 16 inch new MacBooks, we were still kind of in this limbo period where we were kind of like affected and kind of had like some sort of, you know, effect of the previous MacBooks that we owned that we weren't too sure if these next generation MacBooks were going to be worth it. And because of Apple's strange decisions, they really kind of soiled the reputation of a lot of these older MacBooks. And this 2017 MacBook is no exception. So what I will tell you is before getting super deep in this video, I think these MacBooks are important and I think they've kind of brought a lot to the table the 2016 more but because of Apple's issues with these type of devices with failing keyboards sometimes with failing trackpads as well with boot looping issues that I've heard of before but mostly with the keyboard issue it really even with thermal throttling those type of things the fans always being on it really doesn't make too much sense to buy a 2017 MacBook anymore if you own one and you've made it work for yourself then that's perfectly fine but if you're out going right now and you're trying to go purchase a MacBook and it happens to be a 20 17 one it makes absolutely no sense to buy something like this in my opinion even a used m1 macbook air that has came out they're around 700 dollars maybe you can get them cheaper than that even a used m1 macbook pro these things are going to be hitting the market like crazy as more and more people pick up these newer macs especially with if there's ever a new m1 imac pro or if there's a new m1 mac mini that's even better than the mac studio or cheaper than the you know mac studio something like that there's going to be a lot of these m1 devices and i would recommend going that direction to be completely honest but there's still a lot of reasons to buy an intel Mac like this. On the exterior, you have this shell casing that is still exactly the same for the most part as these latest M1 MacBook Pros, the 13-inch models. You did have a few different models you could buy. You could buy one that had, you know, two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side, or you could buy ones that had four USB ports, which were really cool. They were all USB Type-C, so no SD cards, no nothing like that. And this is probably another really big difference that these new MacBooks have that these ones technically don't really have. These M1 MacBook Pros, these are awesome, but they don't have SD card slots like the M1 Max or M1 Pro MacBooks have. The 2017 one has the same exact ports that my current M1 Mac Pro has. So in theory, that really isn't that big of a difference and it's about the same experience that I'm getting to be completely honest. So it's about the same experience that I'm getting to be completely honest. So definitely the USB ports aren't super crazy anymore, but they were pretty crazy at that time. Now flipping it open, we still have this pretty beautiful display. And I think the display of this thing still looks pretty good. I haven't really ran into too many issues with this specific display because they're all kind of the same. The newest ones and these ones, even from the 2016 ones, dude, even the 2012 Retina MacBook Pro display still looks very sharp and it still looks very good. So Apple had a hit on their hands and they just kind of ran with it, which I totally understand understand. Now we also had the trackpad and the touch bar and the keyboard, which are three of the things that a lot of people were kind of flip-flopping about. So starting off with the touch bar, some of these models had it, some of these models didn't. If you had the cheaper one, they actually ended up having just regular keys. The more expensive ones had the touch bar. Funny enough though, that's like the exact opposite. The more expensive ones don't have touch bars, where the cheapest ones do have touch bars. So it's a very interesting thing that they've done, but all these had fingerprint sensors, which were nice. Now we also had the keyboard, which easily one of the worst things that Apple has ever done. They were the butterfly keyboards, which they had, you know, they offered no travel. And more than anything, these keyboards and keys were failing like nobody's business. They were failing all over the place. And this was probably the biggest issue that was plaguing a lot of these older MacBooks. From 2016 all the way up until I think 2019 or the 2020 Intel Macs, they didn't really go ahead and fix this issue. Every single keyboard, I guess it was trying to keep them as light as possible and as you know thin as possible, but that came at a cost. And by 
doing that, these keys did not have any travel. They didn't feel like real keys. They just kind of felt like you were just barely clicking on anything. They were just kind of like you were like stomping or tapping things rather than actually having a clicking button. And it was weird because they were failing too, which it was like the worst of the worst. So because of that, a lot of people picked up these MacBooks and they just weren't happy with the type of, you know, performance and the just type of the capability they were getting with this thing, which in my opinion is totally understandable. Now, fast forward a few years, they fixed this issue, but that doesn't change the 2017 MacBook anymore. Now, we also had this trackpad, which I've certainly gotten used to. I think it's totally fine now, but a lot of people don't like this bigger trackpad either. But personally, I think it's totally okay. And I think a trackpad like this is totally understandable. And I don't really have too many issues with, with this type of trackpad anymore, to be completely honest. So that kind of covers up the outside of the specific MacBook. Now, performance wise, we had a few different models. So if you're getting the 15 inch or 13 inch one, the 15 inch one was going to have more memory and more power and everything. You were getting, you know, eight gigabytes of RAM on the 13 inch one, but you get up to 16 gigabytes of RAM on the 13 inch one as well, which I think is more than enough for a lot of people. And having, you know, 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is what I have currently on my, you know, M1 MacBook Pro, that's a lot of RAM to have for sure. And I think it's totally understandable. You could spec out these MacBooks up to a terabyte or up to two terabytes on the 2017 one, but you could also, like I mentioned before, get, you know, a way better performing machine from that 15 inch 2017 MacBook, which was actually really, really cool. Now, what I would definitely tell you is because Apple at this moment had pretty different models from their, you know, 13 inch ones to their 15 inch ones up until a few years after, if you wanted to go and get a machine that had more power, you can get up to the 15 inch one and spec it out however you'd like. But the problem that a lot of people were having, such as the 2018 MacBooks as well, was thermal throttling. So these MacBooks, in my opinion, one of the most annoying things about a lot of these Intel ones was that the fans would just ramp up like crazy. If I was doing anything on these Macs, the fans would just start ramping up and it was a very annoying thing. If I'm recording audio or if I'm, you know, making a video or whatever, and I have my, you know, jet fans of a MacBook, you know, kind of going off in the background, that can cause a lot of audio issues. And I hated that more than anything. My 2015 MacBook Pro also had this, but the 2017 MacBooks had this as well. But if the, you know, machine was getting too hot, essentially, if it didn't have the proper cooling and if it would just heat up for no reason, well, then it would throttle your specific machine, which happens with a lot of machines out there, and it would actually go ahead and limit your performance. So that was another humongous annoying thing that we had to deal with. Personally, you know, I don't really do super crazy things with my Macs anyway, but if you're somebody who was expecting really good performance from a MacBook, well, you may be experiencing some issues in that specific standpoint. So we're kind of in this weird middle ground where this MacBook has depreciated so much in the used market where these things look super appealing. You know, you can go and buy these things for less than $500 all over the place. And you can probably even find them for like $400 in like pretty decent condition for the 2017 13 inch ones. And even the 15 inch ones are probably around that same price as well. But we are in a weird situation where these MacBooks just really aren't worth it. I just can't think of a situation where I would go and recommend something like the 2017 MacBook Pro really to anybody, mostly because of the issues inside. But it's weird because you look at this MacBook and you see the capability, you see how similar it looks to something like that, you know, M1 MacBook Pro, even to that 16 inch MacBook Pro that we have now. You see how many similarities there are in everything, but you then look at something like the, you know, internals and it paints a different story. So what I will definitely tell you is, I would highly recommend not buying a 2017 MacBook Pro anymore, mostly because of the reasons I listed today, but I would recommend because the newer MacBooks are so much better in every single way, the 2017 MacBook Pro really just doesn't make any sense to buy. So because of this, I would recommend going through and picking up something like that, you know, M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch one. You can get that M1 Pro MacBook as well. If you want to buy one of those, those make a lot more sense to me. This one really doesn't make any sense to me at all, to be honest. So that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.